Alright guys, welcome. This is the packed introduction video. Uh, basically, I'm going to explain how everything in the guild is intended to work, how uh, we want you guys to act um, more so publicly. Uh, we have a preference on that, which I know that sounds really stingy and stupid, but it's a much more idealistic and open thought, so let me get to it. Uh, first thing we're going to go ahead and talk about is ranks. Uh, the ranks in this game for a guild. If you go to management, you can see we have leader, hall leader, elite member, initiate, vice leader, dharmapala, veteran member, and newcomer. Let me just go through those real quick here. Uh, the newcomer. If you just joined the guild, this is your instant rank. You're a newcomer. What this means is we don't expect anything from you. And to put it blunt, we don't expect shit from you, really. Uh, you're here because you're interested. And if you're interested, you will become an initiate. Uh, once you have shown your interest and we place you in the initiate rank, that's when we have an expectancy from you. Once you're, If you're just a newcomer and you're not sure uh, what you want to do in this guild, if you're not sure if you want to be around, if you're not sure you like everybody, if you're not sure you like any of the ideals or the things that go on here, the newcomer rank is for you. You can stay in there as long as you'd like. Whenever you would like to become anything higher, just simply ask uh, that you, you know, simply let us know you want to become an initiate, and we'll set you up right into uh, newcomer training so you can become an initiate. Uh, don't feel that you can't get involved in events. If we say there's a war, we need this, 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 and this. Uh, everybody you can get, everyone who's available, please come aid us. Don't feel like just because you're a newcomer, you can't jump in. Uh, all the newcomer is, uh, the, the only thing that you'll have in, in terms of hindering is you will not receive guild benefits. Uh, it, everyone in the guild works hard to give each other things rather than make anybody pay for it. As a newcomer, you will not receive any free items from us. This is a precaution to make sure that we don't have anybody who's just here to get things. Um, if you show your real interest in the guild and you are an average player, an average guild person, generally those average players become initiates and that helps us find a larger core group. Now, obviously, the initiates, you guys have access to everything. As soon as uh, initiates are as soon as the initiate title is put on, put on over your head, you will instantly gain all guild benefits, being, you know, uh, expectancies. Uh, you'll have your benefits of gaining free things, so on and so forth. Now, as an initiate, um, you, in terms of expectancy, we ask that you appear for, obviously, large events like a war. Uh, if we're under attack, and we have a whole bunch of people on and it's a bunch of initiates seeing one or two or three initiates that weren't there uh, generally we try to figure out why that person wasn't available I mean if you're in like Twilight or something like that where you can't come and defend the territory that's fine but please try to be there for any kind of PvP event um, anything else doesn't really matter it's mainly the PvP stuff we need you there for and it's mainly the things that are in terms of defending and attacking uh, because our initiates are going to be much more trained and understanding than the newcomers will be. Uh, that doesn't mean because you're a newcomer, you're a bad player. It means we don't have equal ground, we don't have equal footing. And the goal of newcomer training is to make everyone have equal footing and understanding of what we're doing and how a Ting Man uh, basically, in a small sense, will work. Um, as for veteran members, Veteran members are the people who have shined through the initiate status by doing ridiculous amounts of hard work. Um, if you're an initiate and you'd like to become a veteran member, you can see the details on how to do that on the Facebook, facebook.com uh, forward slash packed guild. Just type that into your web bar. Don't try to search packed guild. You won't find it that way. Just go straight into it. Check it out. Like it. Go to the notes section. You can see our wars. You can see uh, how the ranking system works. Uh, to generalize it, the veteran will basically uh, be given to you upon your one mil contribution. That takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of effort. You can get contribution through uh, 
funding tails, putting tails into the guild, putting donated mats into the guild under the blueprints tab. You can see which ones we have, which ones we need. Um, you can also do it by escorts, which is what we ask most for. Now, as an initiate, if you go to the expeditures tab, you can see that the guild is, since we are level two, we use 120 popularity per day and we use 147 liang and 700 wind per day and we can't go below 450 popularity that's the most important part right there that popularity is built through guild chat no matter how ridiculous it is and through doing these escorts so it is vital that as an initiate you understand that you need to do escorts you don't have to be the one to max them out I don't care if you do one a week, but you as an initiate need to take the initiative to help the guild grow, help the guild stay growing. Um, if the chat dies and no, no one starts doing escorts, the guild will underlevel, then the guild will slowly fall apart. If it underlevels, people that were in the guild um, above a certain, oh wow, some of us have two mil, anyway, above a certain... Uh, if we don't stay above a certain popularity, the cap, so say if we have 50 um, initiates, if we have 51 initiates, whenever we go down, one of those initiates will randomly be booted from the guild, and I'm not sure how it works outside of somebody's going to get booted based on the cap. So we don't want people to get kicked automatically, and we don't want to lose our guild level. And as you can see, we're at 81 people. It's actually pretty big, considering that we are restricted to only Tang Man. If you don't know that already, why are you watching this video? <laughs> um, and then also, the veteran members. Once you've become a veteran, you can now recruit. As a veteran member, we highly, highly appreciate you. I mean, obviously, you have worked your ass off. Uh, unfortunately, now we're asking more from you. Uh, what we're asking is that you help us recruit help us get more newcomers don't just help us get the newcomers help the newcomers get to this video help the newcomers get to the training help them understand what's going on you don't have to have all the answers but send them to somebody who does uh, you being a vet we assume you already know what's going on how things work and if you don't and you literally just some guy who joined the guild and randomly started doing escorts 24-7 uh, then you're probably a psycho and we want you here anyway so as a psycho be psychotic that's fine but also still try to help push uh, other people to be psycho for the elite members <laughs> the elite members are your team leaders whenever we do raids there's multiple different teams these elite members will be the people that lead teams um, the teams themselves the way that they're going to work is they're going to work like a chessboard. We will show that in a training video here in the future, but keep in mind if you want to be an elite member, the requirement is that you know how to train people. The goal of the videos is to make it so other people can train, so that way they get all the verbal stuff from me, so everything's said the way I want it to be said, and then you do all the physical stuff, so if I'm not available, you can continue to push newcomer training at different time zones. That's the goal, and you need to be an elite member in order to do that. Dharmapala. The Dharmapala are the lore keepers. The Dharmapala have to have all the answers of the guild. Uh, vet members are going to be pushing newcomers towards you and higher for information. The Dharmapalas need to be the people who also keep the peace. Dharmapalas need to be the ones who keep guild members in line. So, by keep the peace, we make sure that Dharmapalas are the ones who are in charge of guild-to-guild -guild affairs, such as shaking hands and kissing babies. And they are also might be in charge of yelling at guild members who need to get yelled at. Similar to, uh, we had an incident where one of our guild members declared a war, I mean a surprise attack, on a guild we were trying to determine if they were actually enemies with us or not. And uh, when, he, when he did that, as soon as I found out, uh, he was instantly removed from the guild. Dharma Apollos will be in charge of removing those kind of people and determining when those kind of people need to be removed. 
Uh, also, as soon as the Dharmapala rank starts being given, I will not question the Dharmapala. If you receive the Dharmapala rank and I have to question it after the act is done, I will remove that rank from you. It is extremely vital that you understand that your goal is to help the leader have less on his shoulders. Um, I, and it's only in things to do with like members getting along with each other. That's really that's really all we want you to do is to make sure everyone's getting along, and to make sure that newcomers who are currently on when you're on understand how to get involved. So if you are a Dharmapala, you will go every time you log on, go to the members tab. Scroll across into the newcomers list. Look at that. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven newcomers on. You're going to go through and message every single one of them and ask them if they're interested in becoming an initiate. If they say yes, you begin the process of getting them into the videos and figuring it all out. All right? That's what I. That's really what I want you to do. And then obviously, if people start trolling, if there's a guild coming after us and attacking, take all the information you can, send it to me. If somebody, if there's nobody online to make a decision, you're a lore keeper. Take as much information as you can, store it somewhere, and then give it to us. So that way we can handle the situation. Um, so you're you're our guild messengers as well. As for what information to obtain, if there's somebody PKing somebody, for example, always get the name, the guild they're in, what rank they are in that guild, and the power of that character. If you want to know why, you can ask me later. I'm going to go ahead and move on to Hall Leaders. As for Hall Leaders, the way that they work is they are the Raid Leaders. A hall leader is somebody who is in charge of an entire war situation. A whole war. Uh, they will be the ones who can lead an entire war without a leader's presence or without a vice leader's presence. The hall leader will be fully trained in how all of the communication stuff is going to work. And that hall leader needs to make sure that he trains that information to other members that want to become hall leaders or to other members who want to become elite members so they can understand the team aspect. The hall leaders will be the only ones that know how to control a raid while elite members will know how to control their teams. So for instance a hall leader is a, in a raid and he's the leader of team 1. He's telling team 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 what to do while elite members leading those teams are telling their members what to do. So, hall leaders, elite members, when it comes to war, all need to have vent in order for us to communicate. That is the only time that vent will be required, is if you are an elite member or a hall leader. So we can communicate, and then elite members will type to their teams what they're doing. Vice leaders. Vice leaders are literally second in command, or third, fourth, and fifth in this case. They are able to make opinions, on the guild's choices and opinions and determine which actions to take. It could be good, it could be bad. Vice leaders, if I have to second guess them, they will also be removed from the vice leader title. Vice leaders, uh, I'm very, very picky on. There's currently only two and there's only room for one more. I'm not really looking to fill that third slot, but if somebody comes across as somebody who might be deserving, they'll get it. Now, as for the way our council works. If you are Dharmapala, Hall Leader, Vice Leader, and Leader, we will all work together to determine options for the guild in a situation. Once those options have been determined, we will place those options up for guild members to publicly vote on which decision to take. We will never, on huge decisions, tell you what, what you have to do. We will do a majority vo vote, so that way everyone can have their word in it and everyone can have their input on which act we take. This is the most important aspect. That is why it is very, very important for newcomers to get involved and become initiates, so that way we can make sure 
that everybody has their word and a decision is truly made by as many people as possible. Votes generally will last a week unless it has to be something crazy like a war. We either have to attack or defend if we, uh, t you know, whatever you, you'll see in the future. Alright, that's enough with the ranks there. Now, as for the guild, um, the PK rules. We don't care if you PK. However, we are not a PK guild. Don't take an action into your own hands and do something that might really piss somebody off without understanding. Do, you cannot do this as a group. If you want to go out of your way and fucking attack a character who's really, really low level and you just want to sit there and farm him like a complete jackass, go right ahead. But you're doing it by yourself. You're doing it by yourself. Those are your actions. That is not a pact command. That is not a unified decision. A unified decision is going to be of multiple members. If multiple members are in a group and they come together and decide that this is a good idea, even if it's not agreed to by higher ups, it still appears as our guild's ideals. So whenever a group, you're hanging out with a group of guildies and you make a decision to do something, realize that if there's more than one of you, you are now showing what our ideals are. We do not condone in camping and unfair PvP advantages and things like that unless there is a situation at hand being a kill on site guild, uh, we were ganged up on by somebody, so now we're all retaliating on everybody who walks by, which includes sometimes bystanders, because obviously if someone walks by and they're not a part of the war, they're going to get hit in the crossfire and then get pissed. That's too bad for them. They should have paid attention to what their guild's yelling about, probably. But anyway, <clears throat> so make sure when you're making an action, if you know it's going to be something that we don't like, do it by yourself. We don't care if you do it by yourself. But don't try to get a whole bunch of other people involved to do it with you because it's going to be at our ideals and I'm going to go after every single one of you and determine where the problem came from. If it's everybody, you all go. If we can't come to terms, you guys can't agree to not be that way or not do something, then it'll obviously result to a boot. Generally, I try to make sure we can work out everything that we can. If we can't work it out, that's very unfortunate. I, I've only had to boot two people since I've created this guild, and it was for very reasonable reasons. Now, one thing, the, the two things that are instant bans, which are the two reasons that I've had to boot somebody, do not interrupt TPs. I don't give a shit. Do not interrupt TPs, like, at all. Um, if you want to interrupt TPs, say, in another school, I might be lenient on it. Maybe. Uh, but that's only if we're doing like a school raid trying to stir up PvP to piss somebody off um, and cause a war or something like that uh, just for the uh, it, just just for a like a PvP scrap or something and even then we're still modest about it you know we're like hey you know uh, we came to interrupt your TP because we wanted to be dickheads we wanted you to kill us but then you know it's nothing directed at anybody personally sorry to ruin your day let's fight uh, it's part of the game, it's an option, and it's what we're taking and we're doing it. But as for in our school, never interrupt TP in our school. Uh, the reason we don't do that is because hindering a Tang Man from leveling is one less Tang Man powerful enough. One less powerful Tang Man is one less recruit that could have probably helped us, and also one less recruit that could have possibly helped an ally. Um, and let's see here. Uh, helping the guild, how, how you can help the guild, obviously live by all those rules, uh, understand all those ideals, help push people, uh, escorts are the huge, huge thing, do escorts, like fucking mad, if you really want to help the guild, your contribution is going to determine your future ranks, you need to gain a veteran status in order to gain anything above a veteran status. Um, our goals as a guild is to create a community in the school, our goals do not rely just on our guild only. Uh, I hold public events for training. I, these videos are all public. I show them to people on the forums. Um, our goal is to unite the school. And from uniting the school, we can then start pushing into other schools doing the same. We are not going to ally with every single guild in the world. But if even if you were, say, uh, say we have an enemy guild, and they have, like, 
ten tang men in there and they come they start attacking us and we're all cool with them and everything we're cool with them because they're tang men if they weren't tang men we probably wouldn't be so nice and the reason is that's part of the aspect of our guild we are all tang men uh, no we're not doing it to cause personal war we're not doing it because we're assholes and we don't like the other schools in fact I'm totally jealous of scholars leisure, leisure kick is fucking insane and Wudangs have some badass abilities as well I love the other schools but this is simply just to immerse ourselves in the fact that we are an all tang man guild therefore we te treat all tang man as if they are part of the guild because they are because we fight for the school uh, this does not always mean we'll attend every single school war, though that will be a goal in the uh, long run. Uh, now, as for behavior, um, if you are in a situation where what you say might determine if somebody attacks you or not, uh, keep in mind that there's a leader around, say I'm around Hantan, say I'm there and I'm talking to somebody and you speak up for me. If you talk for me, you speak for the guild. You do not have that permission unless you are a vice leader or somebody else of the council. If you do not have those permissions, don't speak for the guild. You can speak for yourself, maybe one or two of your friends that you know have an agreement, but you can't speak for the guild because you, you may be the guild because our people make it, but we give you the options on what you get to make. Uh, that sounds kind of abrupt. That sounds kind of rude. Uh, but I simply mean we don't want people to uh, run around being like, Oh yeah, fuck you guys. Uh, we hate this. We hate that. No, we don't need that shit. We don't need that stuff here at all. We do not want that. We do not have that stuck up attitude. We are not arrogant about anything. We're here to play the game just like everybody else. So if we're killing somebody, and we're jumping them, and we're just having fun raiding guards, and it turns into an all-out war. When that all-out war is over, we conversate with everybody. There hasn't been a single PvP situation that we've been in that, at the end, we were still butting heads. Um, hopefully it continues to stay that way. Um, if you were the cause of us butting heads with somebody, I'm going to find out what happened, uh, resolve it, if you turn out to be the bad guy, uh, you're going to be removed from the guild because we can't risk you further enhancing any other headbutting because we do not want that in the guild. Uh, just because it's it's very hazardous uh, it's for the same reason that somebody decides to attack a whole fucking guild base by themselves initiating a surprise attack. Uh, that could have got us into a huge war and we could have been set on somebody's KOS list and we would be fried for life and it would ruin everybody's gameplay so we don't want to get us into that kind of situation and we actually don't do that to anybody else either really um, we've had a couple of KOS lists uh, but that's because they've pretty much done the same um, now the last thing I have to talk about is uh, your life skills your life skills are extremely important because the more you raise your life skills the better the economy grows because then more people are able to sell things things get cheaper the more things are available um, so if you're also wanting to make money this is the only way you can make money is by making things as for which life choice to pick the first thing that I'm gonna say is stop thinking poisoner just because you're a tank man doesn't mean you need to make poisons keep in mind that everyone else has already thought about that and there's plenty of it everything else is more needed than a poisoner however just because I said that now, people are going to stop making poisoners as the Tang Men in the guild, and then we're going to have too much of everything else and not enough poisoners. So, in order to figure that out, talk to the guild. Ask us, what do we have? Who needs what? Who is the list of things? Again, if you check the Facebook, facebook.com forward slash packed guild, you will see all the information that is readily available. Anything that's long and written or is a list will be in the notes section. Everything else can be posts. There can be videos scattered along the place. If you find the video channel, you can find all the playlists and you can find all of the training videos and things, stuff like that that you're going to watch, including this video. Hell, I'll probably put something in here like one of those cool YouTube kids so you can click around and find something. Um, that's it for the video. This is what Pact is. We try to be as friendly as possible to absolutely everybody, even if they aren't in another school. Um, unless, of course, it's a PvP situation where it's like, ah, you know, we're Tang Man. That really can piss people off. People hate Tang Man, especially a whole bunch of Tang Man. Um, just, uh, you know, in the long run, it is a game. 
kill whoever you want to kill. It's just a game. No one's actually going to die here. But if somebody really is freaking out and they're raging and they really want you to stop, be courteous. Don't um, be a dick. If you're being a dick, um, I can only try to amend you being a complete dick for so long. Maybe your first or second time, like, hey, you know, hey, it's only a game. Sorry, my guy likes to kill all the time. You know, we're Tang Man. People like to act like Tang Man. We're just assassins killing everybody. But if I get re repetitive, repetitive, horrible problems with you being that kind of person, I'm just going to remove you, and you're going to turn on one day, and you're just not going to be there anymore. You go, what? So, if you have any questions, simply message any vice leader, message any Dharmapala, message any hall leader, message me, message any vice leader. You can ask them whatever you want. You can ask in the guild. Maybe there's somebody in the guild who's not uh, in a current position, and they're working their way to becoming a position. So, ask anybody, really. Uh, if you can't find answers, again, go to the Facebook. Leave something on the Facebook. I always check the Facebook. I check it all the time to make sure nothing is happening. Uh, also, if something is happening and I'm not online and you can't get a hold of me, uh, you can message me on the Facebook. Eventually, once I find trustworthy uh, counsel, they'll actually have my phone number. So whenever we're under attack, whenever there's a war, uh, I will be texting uh, any council members to make sure that we get as much information across and I can come up with an assorted plan from far away and hopefully it'll give us somewhat of an advantage and then we'll go from there. Again, if you got any questions, just contact whoever you need to contact. Uh, also, <coughs> go through videos more than once. After you've watched a video, don't just assume you know everything in it, because the videos need to be watched before a training session begins. The reason is because the training sessions are physical. The videos are the verbal aspect. The videos are going to teach you what the physical stuff is going to be, such as exercises. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Sorry so long.